that the Bible was to talk about fully in the latter days. Right. Whilst living, in fact, over these few years of my life, I've heard many people being described as the Antichrist. When Barack Obama was the president of the United States, many people suspected that he was the Antichrist. Pope John Paul one time was suspected to be the Antichrist. You can imagine Donald Trump. <laughs> many people think he's the Antichrist, or it could be Boris Johnson, or any of our popular or famous <laughs> world leaders. And since COVID-19 and 5G, Bill Gates is being added to the list as the Antichrist. So you see that it's changed from one person to the other based on circumstances around the person. Why is that the case? Right. To know the Antichrist, let's look at the time of the appearance of the Antichrist. Second Thessalonians 2, 5 to 10. Please let me pick my Bible and read Second Thessalonians 2. Maybe we can start from one to four. Concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to him. Look at how lovely it is described. Concerning so the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, there is something called our being gathering to gathered to him, as in we being caught up unto him. We ask you, brothers and sisters, not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by the teaching allegedly from us, whether by a prophecy or by word of mouth or by letter, or maybe in our case by videos, asserting that the day of the Lord has already come. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion, so first criteria, until the rebellion occurs, then the second criteria, and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. He will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worship, so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Verse 5. Don't you remember that when I was with you, I used to tell you these things. In other words, Paul had been teaching the church over there these things. And he's reminding them that I used to be telling you these things that do not be alarmed. Verse 6. And now you know that what is holding him back. Now you know what is holding him back so that he may be revealed at a proper time. There's a proper time when the Antichrist will be revealed. But something is holding him back. Look at the verse 7. For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work. So what is currently at work, beloved, is the secret power of lawlessness, the spirit of the Antichrist, as later John describes it. But the one who now holds it back, look at it. But the now who, but the one, I beg your pardon, but the one who now holds it back will continue to do so till he is taken out of the way. Well, we can debate and talk about it, but there's a clear point here that someone is holding the son of perdition, the man of lawlessness. Someone is holding the Antichrist back. I believe it's the Holy Spirit. Because as long as the Holy Spirit is here and the church is here, the work of the Antichrist cannot fully be achieved. Bible says that, and then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor, the splendor of his coming. So is it fair to conclude that the Antichrist will be fully revealed after the rapture, after the church or the Holy Spirit is taken away? First John chapter 4, 2 to 4, friends, clarifies this. This is how you can recognize the spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming, and even now is already in the world. Friends, it's so clear over here that what is already in the world is the spirit of the Antichrist, not the Antichrist. So if the Antichrist has not come, and anybody is making it look like something is going to be the 666, isn't it questionable a bit. All the technologies and the many things that are coming is leading towards the end, is bringing a certain world system to view, but it does not mean that is giving us the Antichrist. At the moment, what is operating is the spirit of the Antichrist. And it's not the spirit of the Antichrist that gives the 666 or the mark of the beast. It's the Antichrist. Those who believe in the Antichrist are giving that mark. Don't let me digress. Let me just take to, to it. So basically, with the time of the appearance, 
Second Thessalonians 2, 5 to 10 clearly uh, helps us to understand that someone is preventing him. And it is after that person is taken and we believe is the Holy Spirit through the church resisting mm -hmm. the Antichrist. Then he will set himself in God's temple and proclaim to be God and fight against anything called God. The spirit of the Antichrist is already at work. So will those taking the vaccines receive the mark of the beast? The response can be that uh, it can't be because the Antichrist has not yet fully been revealed. The church has not yet been raptured. If we want to speak, if we want to stick to our premillennial concept, it could be a mirror reflection of what would be happening after the Antichrist has come. Please don't get me wrong. It could be a mirror reflection because basically all that the church is doing is preparing ourselves to become like the church when Jesus arrives. This is a very deep theological statement. So the church now, when we're talking about purity, holiness, how we worship, we basically are training ourselves to become like the church when Jesus appears. The church that Jesus is preparing to make us. In the same way, the world system is preparing itself for when the Antichrist comes, but I wouldn't on the basis of scripture fully agree that these things give you the successes because it will come after the Antichrist has been revealed. So now let's look at vaccines and the mark of the beast 666. I should be landing now, maybe just give me five minutes. This aspect is extremely important. Revelation 13, 15 to 18 we hear about the mark of the beast, 666. Let me read it. Revelation 13, 15 to 18. The second beast was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast so that the image could speak and cause all who refused to worship. Please get this clear in your spirit. Let's look at the script word by word. So that the image could speak and cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed. He says that, it also forced all people, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hands or on their foreheads, so that they could not buy or sell unless they had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of its name. This calls for wisdom. <laughs> Verse 18. Let the person who has insight calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. That number is 666. Okay, let's go back to the script. The second beast was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast so that the image could speak and cause all. So the image was supposed to do something. I mean, for those of you who have followed the teachings on the book of Daniel, you see that an image was erected. The image was the image of a colossal man, a total man. The head was gold and we've got different metallic description of that man. But all those who refused to worship that image, record gives the three brothers, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were put into a blazing furnace. So the issue is about the worship of an image because the instruction is to kill all those who do not worship the image. So now, when the boys refused to worship the image, they were put into a blazing furnace. It means that they didn't have an identification to belong to those who are worshiping the image. The exception from death is to worship. So is to bow down to the image. Is to, so all those who were forced to, whether great or small, rich, poor, free, and slave, to receive a mark on their right hands, don't you think this could be related to the worship of the image or the worship of the beast? Couldn't this be a mark that is representing those who have forsaken God and are worshiping the beast? It's just food for thought. Let's see. There's something very clear in the book of Ephesians. The book of Ephesians. In fact, if you look at Ephesians carefully, Ephesians 1, 13, 14, it says that, when we believed, we were sealed or marked. We were marked with a seal of the Holy Spirit. So believers have a mark. The question I usually throw out is, is that mark on our forehead, on our right hand? Is that mark a microchip? Is that mark? So what is the believer's mark? It's called the seal of the Holy Spirit who has come to live in us. I'm not saying much on this, but I just want to throw the question to you. Whether that mark actually is going to be a physical item on people. Just think about it. Couldn't this be a spiritual ID? 
And spiritual asking, not something invisible, but something based on worship, what you believe in. Bible says the foundation of the Lord remains sure, and the Lord knows those who are his. All throughout scripture, my dear brothers and sisters, I have seen that God's problem with mankind is belief or unbelief in his son. He has a problem with those who do not believe in his son, who do not worship him. But those who believe in Jesus Christ and accept him as their Lord and personal savior are given a mark. They are given the seal of the Holy Spirit as a mark evidence of being a Christian. And you see, when we read about the image, it is for those who worship the image. So a time is coming when it's going to be you are either for Jesus or you are either for the world. And this is where I personally want to humbly submit something for the world to consider. If the attainment or the getting of the mark of the beast is solely to do with a vassal, getting a microchip, and it's got nothing to do with the belief of Jesus Christ, then there's a big question with our gospel. So now a person can be an unbeliever and out of strong will decides that I'm not going to take the mark. I'm not going to take the microchip. I'm not going to take the vassal. Then because of that, he's going to go to heaven. Since when did we believe in that? We believe that going to heaven is by believing in Jesus Christ. I believe that the denial of Jesus Christ and the worship of the beast, the worship of the king of Babylon, the worship and the subscription to the ideologies of Babylon gives you a certain mark at the right time. It gives you a certain mark. And when the mark of the beast is revealed, and of course, if we stick to our premillennial concept, then the church would have been raptured already. So it's a matter of, do you still want to maintain your faith or you want to subscribe to the Antichrist? You want to worship a different God. If you worship a different God, you obtain the mark of the beast because it is to mark you for eternal judgment to hell. I would have no problem, friends, don't get me wrong. I will have no problem if it is a physical mark, if it is a microchip. But the only problem I would have is that if it is not linked to the not believing in Jesus Christ, then our gospel is not as strong as we think. So for example, if it becomes like, if you don't believe, if you believe in Jesus, you will not be given the mark. But if you don't believe in Jesus, then we are going to give you the mark so that you can trade, you can buy this. Then I fully understand that this is the mark of the beast because it's got to do with a worship of a beast. It's got to do with a worship of an image. It's got to do with an alternative God. Please don't get me wrong on this. It can be any physical thing. I have no problem with that. But the only thing I want to clearly establish is that it's got something to do with acceptance or denial of our God. I've seen many food types. Sometimes it's like sardines, canned food, and they've written successes and they written it's as if when you eat that food, then you get a mark of the beast. So if the mark of the beast now becomes dependent on the eating of certain type of food, then if I'm able to abstain from that food, then I don't have the mark of the beast. Where would our Christian faith lie? Sometimes it is like mesh, rasta, and it is like a microchip, jeans, trousers, and all that, and they are coming from a certain place. Immediately you take it, then you get a mark of the beast. Can that be true from what we read? And even if we want to stick to our premillennial concept, of course, I, like I said, I've got great respect for those who think otherwise on that. Then I'll be very careful to assume that a vaccine gives the mark of the beast. If the vaccine is because I have not accepted Christ, therefore I'm given a vaccination, then that could be the mark of the beast. But not when people ignorantly, because they are sick, go for a vaccination or they go for medication and it's got nothing to do with believe or not believe in God, believe or not believe or accept or not accept Jesus Christ, then they are given an everlasting mark and they were not given opportunity to confess that they don't believe in Jesus and they are giving that mark automatically. Friends, it, it doesn't sit well in the overall concept of our Christian doctrine. And this is why I'm humbly submitting for further reflection by our big guys and by everyone who wants to study. Because I know from Ephesians 1.13 that when we believe we were marked, that that mark is the seal of the Holy Spirit. There are further scriptures, Revelation 16, 
verse 2, Revelation 19, verse 20. Take time and read this. And you will see that anytime the mark of the beast was mentioned, it was associated with the worship of the image. May the Lord bless you. I'll pause over here for questions. God bless you. God bless you. Any questions? Thank you so much, Pastor, for, for going through this with us. There are a few questions um, that I will put to you. The first question is, um, if what is happening, like the vaccine, microchip, are signs of the spirit of the Antichrist, does it mean that as Christians, we can accept it? Okay. Thank you very much, my sister Audrey. Um, if what is happening, the development of vaccines and microchip are signs of the Antichrist, does that mean that Christians can accept it? Is that a question? Yes. Um, I wouldn't necessarily tie those two things, like I've been explaining, as signs of the Antichrist. There's been, friends, medications, vaccinations all over the years. When there was this outbreak of flu, there was the development of antibiotics, penicillin. When Alexander Fleming first developed this, it's, it's cured and it's healed many people. I'll be very, very careful to link it to the Antichrist. The spirit, the ideology, the concept may be related to the Antichrist. But if is you, you think about it, for example, there's a church member and that church member is poorly and a vaccine has been developed and is given vaccination and the church member recovers and is out preaching the good news, talking about Jesus. And we want to say that the person has taken the mark of the beast. The 666, I, I would be a bit careful with that conclusion because the mark, friends, all I'm trying to say, the mark has to do with believe or not believe in Jesus, believe or not believe in God because that is what the Antichrist is about. I don't know if I've answered it directly, but I, I feel this broader perspective may help people to put it in, in context. Thank you, Audrey. Thank you very much. Um, the next question I think is in two parts, but I'll read the first part and then you can answer that and then I'll read the second part. So the first part of the question is, has, has God already started judging the nations? Okay, should I, should I deal with that? Yes, please. Right. Um, may the Lord help us with this. The judgment of the nations are usually in two folds. Day in, day out, the, the law of God, the spiritual codes of God in creation, executes judgment. For example, if you do this, you get that. If you do, these are principles built in, in, in nature. So if so somebody has offended. And a typical example is the way we are managing the earth and how human beings are overstretching their reach and making everything look like it depends on us. In fact, the advancement, the overstretching of the resources of the earth comes with its own consequence. I've got a scientist friend and we were talking about this, how the second law, I think, of thermodynamics or first law, I've forgotten which of them, is talking about how the system would have to give exhaust itself as in bring something out in order to remain in equilibrium so such judgments are going on and if a person says yes the lord is going to judge but there is ultimate judgment and that is awaiting an appointed time that ultimate judgment is when christ jesus has come christ jesus has not come yet so i'll be very careful to conclude that god he is possibly judging the nation based on the first principle I, I said, but ultimate judgment would come after Christ Jesus has been revealed. And thank you. I hope that, that, that answers the question. Um, the second part of the question is, has the fourth seal of the apocalypse, apocalypse been yeah. broken as spoken in Revelation? Uh, I would... I would be careful with, with that conclusion because that is also to do with the coming of, of Jesus and the final judgment to be to be declared. So it's tied to, to the first one. So there is an earlier judgment of the nations, but that is based on the principles of God. If you do this, you get that. 
but the final judgment which describes the opening uh, of God's final declaration of punishment of sin, hell, and all that uh, is only after Christ Jesus has returned. Thank you. Um, we have another question, and it says, at the rapture, Jesus will, will appear in the skies. So isn't that a second coming? Before, before he comes with the saints, then what about the war? Jesus comes again, or is that a continuous event? All right. The, <laughs> when I was young, in, uh, so, so years ago, I was too young, though. <laughs> there, there was this war, and uh, it was popular in movies, the, the Battle of Armageddon. Yeah, I think that's what the, 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 the question is re referring to. Um, it's a very difficult area, my dear brothers and sisters, because many people hold different views about the rapture and all that. But if we stick to our pre-millennial view of the coming of our Lord, then there is going to be rapture. But that rapture is not usually described as the second coming, if you, if you get it. So the rapture is the church being caught up to be with Jesus as I explained earlier on. So Jesus does not touch the earth. Rather, believers are caught up to be with him. This is our fundamental understanding of the rapture. So back to the question whether Jesus will appear. Yes, indeed, he will appear in, in the sky, but that is not usually described as the second coming. So when we have gone up, rewards and other things given, then now Christ Jesus would come with the saints to establish his kingdom. And this is where there's a battle of the Armageddon afterwards and Christ's millennial real reign over the earth will continue. So it is in the question is asking whether it's a continuous event. It's a continuous event as in the timelines, there's a logical flow of it, but it's not as if when the rapture happens, then Christ Jesus has come. Some believers may not be raptured from our understanding and they will still have to fight for their faith and Christ Jesus will come to redeem them when we have returned to the earth. Thank you. Um, we've got another question that says, was, was Barack Obama speaking from a spiritual perspective or personal um, experience when he said that as Africans, we should not accept any of the vaccine coming from America and Europe because the white people want to kill us? I've seen that tape, in fact, that video, and uh, I wish I had direct access to Barack Obama to find out from him whether he actually said that. Because uh, nowadays, a lot, a lot of things are happening, and it's very difficult to conclude that he, he said that. I carefully wrote, read the script. Um, the quality of the writing is a bit suspicious for me. That's all I can say on that. Yeah. Friends, don't, um, let me clarify this. If there is any vaccination that is going to be pushed on anyone and it's associated with, don't believe in God, believe in this vaccination, deny Jesus and come for this vaccination, or there is any indication of a vaccination which is going to make you an unbeliever, don't go for it. But if, it's a vaccination to heal a disease. And it is believed that once you take that vaccination, you have obtained a mark of the beast. It's got no scriptural basis. That's all I'm trying to say. Because getting the mark is based on belief or not belief. That's all I'm trying to clarify. So it is what the vaccination is associated with. It is not just obtaining the vaccination. It's the logic, it's the philosophy, it's the idea behind the, the vaccination, sorry. Or is that okay? Yes, yes, that's okay. Thank you. Um, I believe there is another question, but I don't have access to it at the moment. Um, there's a question coming through. I'm just waiting for it to ask. <laughs> um, we got another question. Okay, someone asks, is God angry with us? Wow. It's a very difficult question and I, I respond to this with great empathy to everyone who is hearing me because the times that we are in um, is very 
painful and difficult. In a few minutes ago, I was listening to the news and counting the number of deaths and all that, and a statement that a gentleman gave that we are people, we are not statistics. I told my children I was gonna put that on my status because we are people, we are not statistics. Mm -hmm. So when the numbers are counted like that, 3,000 people dead and all that, it's very mm -hmm. painful. Is God angry with us? Very difficult. There are five major reasons for the occurrence of calamities or many other things. The first reason is sin. Sin makes the human being vulnerable, open to, to trouble. So if you look through the book of Genesis, when man sinned, we were exposed to the many painful situations of life. This is not how God created us. So sin is one reason. The second one is demons. By virtue of our sin, Satan has authority to execute punishment because of sin, because the soul that sin must die. Not only that, there are times that when we have not kept good care of ourselves and we have violated natural laws, we can have repercussion out of that. There are instances that God is also executing judgment. We found that in Sodom and Gomorrah. And there are times that God allows these things for his own glory, for his own glory. So the question is, is God angry with us? It's a very difficult one to respond. We would have to interplay between these five aspects and gradually come to the point that if we are believers, even if God is angry with us, we can appeal to God for mercy. If the land has sinned, like last time we were told that God is looking for somebody to stand in the gap and intercede, we can pray to God. Christ Jesus has paid for the penalty of sin, so we can come boldly to our Father and ask him for forgiveness. So even if it is God's anger with us, I wouldn't let us say that God is angry with us, so let's fold our arms. Let's cry to him. He's a merciful God, and he will show mercy to us. So my brother, my sister, whoever asked the question, it's a very difficult one, but I would rather want to open a window of possibility that let's cry out to God, and he's able to help us in times like this. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Um, we have another question. Why would not all believers be taken during rapture? Thank you very much. Um, it's similar to the question of why would all believers not be at church on Sunday? And it's similar to the question of why would all believers not be praying in times like this? It's similar to the question of why would all believers not be holy? And why would all believers not stop cheating? Why would all believers not stop this, not stop that, not stop this, not stop that? God has given us opportunity in times like this to repent fully. But you and I know that not many people take what we are saying seriously. And this is why some will be left behind until they realize that what they were told is the reality. By the way, this fits into the premillennial concept of rapture. So anyone with a different view on the premillennial nature of tribulation and all that will answer it differently. But in the context of what we believe in, that is why some would be left behind. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is, what do you think about, about the signs and wonders? For example, the rivers around the world turning red. Yeah, the book of Revelation talks about signs and wonders again. Maybe I'm hiding behind our premillennial nature. So what, what he's trying to say is that um, the church will be raptured, some believers will be left, then the Antichrist will start performing signs and wonders. He will bring life and order so that people will believe in him as God, so that they will deny their God. And this is why some will believe in the Antichrist and therefore deny their God and they will be punished. For, for, for that. So the signs of the Antichrist as demonstrating that he is powerful, he is the one to, to save the world, he's the one to, to deliver and all that is basically trying to confuse people and convince people that they have to believe in the Antichrist. But my first advice would be church, 
if indeed there's a rapture, then all of us must live our lives in such a way that we will be caught up and we would avoid the tribulation that is to come. This is what we were taught. This is what we were introduced to when we first became Christians. And it has been a guiding principle for all of us. Don't wait for the second chance. It might be too late. Thank you. Um, we have a question here that says, has Matthew 24, 20 to 26 been, been fulfilled, which is what we see happening today? With days been shortened, false prophets, deceiving people and so on. Um, is that the second sign of things to happen? Right, so let's take the script again, Audrey. Matthew 24. 20 to 26. 20, did you say 22? 20, 20 to, zero to, yeah, to zero to 26. So pray that your flight will not take place in the winter or on the Sabbath, for then there will be great distress when equal from the beginning of the world until now and never to be equaled. Again, those days had not been cast short, no one would survive, but for the sake of the elect, those days will be short. The thing about Bible prophecy is there are always two parts of it. For example, Isaiah talks about the virgin will give birth, and indeed in the book of Isaiah, you see a virgin giving birth, but in Matthew, the angel talks about it again, and now Mary gives birth. So there's always the dual nature, it's called the dual nature of, of scripture. There's an aspect of it which is being fulfilled over here, but if you look at the beginning, actually from verse 15 then he's talking about when you see standing in the holy place the abomination that causes the desolation spoken of through the prophet daniel let the reader understand and this refers to the coming of our lord and master jesus so if we are to take it literally then it's only an aspect of it remember how i explained that we are basically trying to reflect what is to come in our modern day so that the church that is now is being purified to represent how the church will be in the future. So in this context, yes, maybe an aspect of it is being fulfilled, but I wouldn't claim that there's a total fulfillment of that. It's possibly a reflection of it, but the actual thing is after Christ Jesus, is when Christ Jesus is on his way to us on that. But that's Thank you. Fully being yeah, you. fulfilled. Okay. Um, Another question is that someone says, I read somewhere that, that COVID-19 is to pave the way, is to pave the way for the Antichrist and also for those who do not believe in God. It is a goal to cut down the population. Is that true? I guess that's what they're so doing. COVID-19 is a goal to cut down the population. Yeah. And 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 pave the way for for the antichrist and people who do not believe in god all oh, right there are three major things audrey we can we can share thoughts on and for anyone listening to me i things to do with the end time i've got great respect for other views so uh, maybe not giving a final statement on this there are three major things no one can fully de defend science and advancement because we do science with what we know now and have no idea its implication. So when I was one time asked the question of even 5G and its relationship with COVID-19, I, I was careful to say that, well, there's no scientific evidence and I'm yet to know how um, a kind of radio wave can induce a biological virus scientifically, but I will not be surprised if in the future someone proves that to, to me. So in the same way, the consequences of COVID-19, what is behind it? Clearly, if we want to say that it's a deliberate attempt by someone to eradicate human beings and pave way for the antichrist, uh, I wouldn't doubt that necessarily, but I wouldn't accept it also fully. The reason being that this could be due to an error. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a scientific or a laboratory error that has led to that. That's one possibility. Apart from that, it could also be a natural occurrence because remember, we are pushing the earth and its resources beyond sometimes its limits. So there could be a natural occurrence or effect 
of that. And the third also, the third reason also, there could be an agenda that we have no clue about. So if it is to eradicate human beings to pave way for the Antichrist, um, that's the bit I get a bit worried about because it's not as if people have to die for the Antichrist to come. Because now, if a believer dies, he's going to be with the Lord. He's escaped the Antichrist. Is that what the Antichrist is looking for? I however know that John chapter 10 verse 10 says, Satan came to kill, to steal, and to destroy. So there could be a satanic agenda and all that. But when it is linked directly to the act of the Antichrist, um, we would need to be a bit careful with that because it makes us easily throw our towel and say, well, it's bound to happen. Therefore, we can't do anything uh, about it. But friends, I'm aware of the rigorous scientific effort believers. I'm saying believers because sometimes we make it look like the scientists are worldly guys and people who want to kill and all that. But within the science community, there are very strong believers there who are working hard to provide a solution. And very soon the solution will come. And it's a very important fact for us to uh, understand that <laughs> uh, some scientists are Christians, they are believers. So it's not that science is preaching itself to kill and blah, 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 and induce this. No, no. Check through the history of science. And many of the predicaments that came, the solution came from Christian scientists. And this time around, as the church is praying, I believe from the core of my heart that in no time, the Lord himself will bring a solution to stop it. This statement of the Antichrist coming during the earlier flu pandemics, the measles outbreak, the same statements were made. But some believers stood up and researched and came up with solutions. That's why I'm a bit careful um, in clarifying that. Sorry, maybe I'm modeling too many things to, together. I don't deny the end is coming, please. The end is coming. Let's all believers be aware of that. The work of the Antichrist is, is there, is coming. But don't let us sit back and see if the end has come because Christ Jesus warns that it has not come yet. Let, do, let us all do the best we can of the situation. Thank you, Audrey. Thank you. Obviously, I'm going to allow you. Just bear with me. <laughs> I'm going to allow a few more questions. Um, that question that says, is there a question? Okay, I'll it says, um, I believe regarding the um, vaccinations, we don't have to refuse unless it is associated with our faith. Exactly. I like that. Um, I like that conclusion. <laughs> because many years ago, the story of the bank cards and as well as different cards were raised us were raised as an issue of faith but yeah. now we are all using it without a cause yes audrey can i just uh, intercept and say this yeah. whoever has written that question has just summarized all that i'm trying to say god bless the person that's all that i'm trying to say if the vaccination <laughs> is an issue has to do with our faith then no don't take it but if it's got nothing to do with our faith then it's nothing to do with the mark of the beast. It could be preparing us for something. I have no problem with, with, with that, but it has to do with our faith. Whoever has summarized and God bless you. That's all that I've been trying to say. Amen. Um, John, there's no, there's lots of questions. <laughs> um, God grant another us. Another question is, do you think that COVID-19 is a distraction from what they are really focusing on, which is 5G? Oh, good, 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 good. There are videos out there claiming that 5G is a cause of COVID-19 and that COVID-19 is not a virus at all. So we shouldn't be focusing on washing our hands, staying indoors, because the whole thing is a cover up. The problem is actually 5G. I suppose this is what a person is trying to, to, to get to because this is what the some media outlets are trying to make it look. Okay, Audrey, let me sound scientific now on this, then we will balance it with the theology. Okay, if 5G is causing COVID-19 or the coronavirus, 
or if the whole thing is about 5G and that 5G is killing people here, here and there. The scientific response to that should be, just get an animal cell, I mean, let's put it in plain term, just get the flesh of an animal, take it to a lab and expose it to radio waves or tailor a 5G radiation. I'm just using that, but it's actually a wave. Tailor it onto the flesh of the animal. Allow time over it. Whatever time they are estimating that exposure to 5G causes coronavirus, expose the flesh to it. Leave it and come back. And now do your experiment to say that, okay, look at the animal cell, see how it has been distorted to not change into coronavirus. Then you can now show to the world that, look, I performed this experiment. I exposed an animal cell to 5G and it has induced COVID-19 into it. Then the argument will stop. The argument will cease. This is what science did. That's sorry. This is what science uh, science is based on experiment evidence. And it is a very simple scientific test. So I get a bit worried when someone claims to be a scientist and says that, oh, because 5G towers have been mounted somewhere and because they were mounted, uh, it is killing people and it is appearing as COVID-19. The other argument is that it's not even COVID-19 at all. Don't worry. Meanwhile, I mean, we, we've seen through <laughs> microscopes and other uh, <laughs> devices, the appearance of this virus. And they want us to deny that it's not a virus, it's COVID-19. Then the other argument is that COVID, I mean, the 5G is causing COVID-19, which I've just demonstrated how it can be proven scientifically. So I'm just throwing it out there. Anyone claiming that 5G is the cause of COVID-19, just save the world of this noise and many things and just prove this scientifically. We will be okay. And now we can see Hawaii and say, why have we come to kill people? Otherwise, the thinking that China installed this and you see Russia did not install it. And that's why you see back in the news just yesterday and today, you see the records from Russia, but they are claiming that they didn't install it. That's why they didn't get it. How does this add up, my dear brothers and sisters? It doesn't add up scientifically. It's just like I was giving this illustration to my friend that a very good friend of mine, he's an electrical engineer. And I was telling him that just imagine that a light bulb in my room goes bad and you come in with a light bulb to fix it. Then immediately you go out, all the fish in my refrigerator gets rotten. Then I conclude that because you came to fix the light bulb in the kitchen and the fridge is in the kitchen, is the light bulb which is radiating a kind of ray into the fish to get rotten. Therefore, all light bulbs cause rotten fish. This is how illogical that conclusion is scientifically. If you want to test that the fish has gotten rotten because of the light bulb, what you do is you pick the fish, you put in an incubator, you put the light bulb on it and see whether that fish will get rotten. Because it is possible that whilst fixing the light bulb underneath or uh, on the shoe, of the electrical engineer, there was a chemical or there was a virus that dropped in my kitchen that found its way into my refrigerator. But you see that narrow conclusion is forgetting about all the possibilities of other things causing the fish to get rotten. And this is what we are doing with 5G and the COVID-19 thing. Friends, let me disclaim here, I'm not in any way saying that it cannot cause that, but I don't know and there's no scientific evidence. I want a proper scientific proof. Then we can speak to our congregation that this is what has caused that. Otherwise, I'm tempted to think that the evidence out there does not show that radio waves cause biological virus. In the worst case, they could cause bone marrow pains. They could cause even loss of hair, nausea, and all that. But I'm yet to see any scientific data um, that proves that. Someone may think that or ask that, look, they are covering up. That's why no one is saying that. Please, please, can I humbly submit to the world or to anyone who is hearing me that not all scientists are atheists. The science community, there are a lot of Christians and believers. 
over there. So don't let us preach our God against science. There are Christian scientists and they wouldn't stay there for this to happen. I know I've gone overboard, but Audrey is typical of COVID. So. <laughs> I'm going to ask three more questions. I'm really sorry oh, that we, grand grace. <laughs> we will not be able to go through all the questions that I've received. Um, the next question is who and what is mystery um, Babylon that sits on many waters? Oh, yeah, the mystery of Babylon. I wish I had a scripture I would have been able to refer, refer it. Okay, let's move to the next question. I'll look for that scripture, then we can discuss it. Alternatively, if the person can send a scripture, then we can engage with it. But I'll look for it in my Bible. Okay. And the next question is, um, after this shaking, is God going to bless his people uh, spiritually and, and materially? Hallelujah. This afternoon, our prayer line, you can see was leading us and he was claiming some promises after COVID-19. And I said, hey, my man, he's a business man. <laughs> so he's looking at how opportunities will come up and financial blessings would come all through church history, my dear brothers and sisters. We have seen God working through circumstances that seemingly were very difficult. You may even describe them as evil, but he works together through all these for his own glory and now we know that you know what Romans says we know that all things work together for the good of those who are called according to the purpose of God so it's definitely going to work together for our good saying this I always approach it with great empathy and great care because families are losing their loved ones people are going to be with the Lord people are breathing their last there are frontliners and all that so I don't want us to overlook the seriousness of the problem at stake and just jump into the future because some Christians have the tendency to overlook now and just jump into the future so that they are insensitive to what people are going through now. Now we need to call on God to deal with the situation. Then we cry also that after this is over, he's going to open. The, I know God is going to lift his church high. You know the story in the book of Genesis talking about Noah when the flood came. All that the flood did to the ark was to lift the ark up. So the church will be lifted up spiritually and materially. There will be various blessings, but I don't want us to overlook what is happening now. We need to call on God. Families and loved ones are going. Lord, show mercy on this land. Show mercy on this land. In Jesus' name. Amen. Audrey, yeah. Yes. Um, another question is, if God doesn't do things without, without revealing it to his to his prophets, shouldn't we have had some sort of pre-warning from God through the church or the church leaders about the virus? Uh, good, good, good question. There are some prophets who nowadays are coming up claiming that the Lord spoke to them about, about it and uh, they are prophesying. And in fact, I've listened to some tapes from some men of God purporting to be indicating what was likely to happen and they gave specific dates and all that. So some prophets claim to have heard from God about, about it. Yes, so God possibly might have revealed to some prophets. And he revealed, sorry, he reveals to the church universal. Um, but you see the thing about Revelation is and all that is, sometimes it's far-fetched. So God can reveal, but you may not catch what he's saying because trust me, if anyone had a revelation that there was a, micro a microscopic organism, something very small and it's killing people. I was in Audrey, I came to you say, saying that I had a dream and there was this microscopic object smaller than an ant and it grew up big and it was killing people here and there. You're going to throw this revelation and insight even away. So this is how maybe God has communicated to many church leaders, but it didn't click easily to a lot of church leaders what was about to happen. But to the church universal, I'm convinced that it was revealed to some men of God. Thank you. Thank you. Um... I'm going to go back to the previous question, and that will be the last question for this evening. Um, the question that asked about the 
the the mystery of of um, Babylon that sits on many waters. Okay, that's Revelation the scripture 17. is Revelation 17. 17. Yeah. Mm, Babylon the prostitute. <laughs> And the beast, one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and said, I will show you the punishment of the great prostitute who stood by many waters. Yeah, so first, the king, Daniel, Daniel also speaks about, about this, and basically he's talking about, um, you know, the concept of Babylon. Um, <laughs> Babylon, the prostitute on the beast, the person behind all that is happening. Has come, I will show you the punishment of the great prostitute who sits by many waters. With her, the kings of the earth committed adultery, and the inhabitants of the earth were intoxicated with the wine of her adulteries. Then the angel carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness. Then I swear, we will sit on the scarlet beast that was covered with blasphemers. Then, friends, Babylon, from all our teachings this week, refers to any idea, any kingdom, any authority, any philosophy any imagination that set itself against the knowledge of god against the church and it is the spirit of the antichrist it is the person who is involved in everything against the church and that scripture talks about the punishment that god was going to give to the prostitutes or the beast referring to babylon and that sits on the waters basically referring to the worldly systems and everyone who is involved in so it's an execution of punishment to the one who has opposed God. And that's why it carries on from verse 5, Babylon the Great, the mother of the prostitutes and all of that. Then later you see it says, Babylon the Great has fallen. And indeed it will fall and give way to the new Jerusalem. Our God reigns and the kingdom of his might is forever hallowed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we are going to end it here. Um, please do keep sending your questions in. We will try and get them answered to you. Um, there were lots of questions. I just couldn't get through all of them. Um, so I, I, we do apologize for that. But yeah, please keep sending your questions. You can keep sending it through to um, the various chats and we will try and get them answered for you. Um, before we close, if Pastor, you could lead us in a quick prayer. And just right. before that, just to remind everybody, you can keep following us on PI Worship Center for, for things that are to come and for events and for programs. Um, we're always doing something. I'm aware that there are a few people who are not part of um, us. So please follow us on at PI Worship Center on all social media platforms. And, um, um, and you can keep up to date with what is happening. Um, we will end here. Thank you so much for everyone joining us joining us on facebook live i can see so many people liking and and so many questions so thank you so much for joining um i will now hand it over to pastor if you could lead us on thank you very much audrey for hosting us and thank you everyone for joining us at pi worship center i i want to encourage all of us to pray but we are praying calling on the name of the lord to have mercy on this land whether it is his punishment whether it's Satan working, whether it's the spirit of the Antichrist, his mercy can overrule everything. May I humbly ask all believers who can hear my voice, just cry unto God and say, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. In the name of Jesus, shall we pray? Rabbi Hasoka, Lord God, have mercy. Have mercy upon us. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, is our cry unto you. Oh, Lord God, in mercy, oh God, remember this land, oh God. Show your mercy to this land all over the world, oh God. If it's as a result of sin, Lord, show mercy. In the name of Jesus, arise and defend your name. Arise and defend your name. In the name of Jesus Christ, our God, our King, please heal our land. Bible says, if the people who are called by your name will humble their hearts and come to you in prayer, O oh God, in submission, Lord, as we fast and pray day in, day out, God, we pray that you will heal our land. Lord, bring about innovation, bring about vaccination, bring about technology, bring about things that will help take away this virus. Heal the land, our God. Heal the 
land, our God. Heal the land, our God. You are faithful, God. Oh, this virus in the mighty name of Jesus. And you have to look after yourself. Another another place is better. <laughs> We give you all the praise, we give you all the honor. We thank you for the opportunity to share your word and the bits you were able to help us to provide insight into. We give you all the glory and give you all the worship. We cry back to you, God, show mercy on this land. Do not wipe us off, O oh God, for your kingdom must still reign on earth. We pray in Jesus' mighty name that you will intervene with scientific development. We will intervene with ideas. You will intervene with solution. Be quick, oh God. Be quick on this, we plead. We pray, my Lord, that you will cover all your children. You soak us, my Lord, and you become, my Lord. We will come under your feathers, as the psalmist says. We give you praise and we thank you. We bless you and adore you. We worship you in Jesus' mighty name. Have we prayed? Help us to live right for you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you so much. Have a good evening.